We begin in the world of shadows, where five years ago several portals appeared on Earth, and between the portals humans would be able to reach the different level of the shadow world. These people are known as awakened ones among humans and have an opportunity to obtain great power, but with the chance of losing their lives at any time. When a manga named Tao Tao was about to be hit by a creature from the shadows, she is saved at the last second by the swordswoman Lu Chua, who makes no bones about her beauty. We also see a fighter called Anya, a warrior called Raichan, and our protagonist called Lu Feng, who was trapped in a sphere of light and asked to be freed, but as he was still at level 1 and apparently a novice, they refused to release him, and decided to continue their fight alone. At one point, an even bigger monster appeared to confront them, and the team's magician cast a skill to increase her teammates' defense. And so they began the battle against this huge creature. However, they quickly began to be pressured by the demon, and when Lu Feng asked to be freed, the magician finally decided to release him. Lu Chua was about to be completely erased from history, but before the monster could take her life, our protagonist appeared to save her. Apparently she wasn't too happy that a newcomer had saved her life, and he simply told her to shut up, since with just one throw of his sword he managed to completely wipe out the creature they were having so much trouble defeating. He then said that he could see the nest of these creatures nearby, and they needed to get out of there as quickly as possible, making the warrior think he was some kind of prophet. After that, Lu Chua decides to convince his friends to follow our protagonist, and on the way she asks if he really was a novice, since he knew a lot more than they did. And Lu Feng reveals that, in fact, he knew so much because he had been trapped in that world for more than 3,000 years, and she asked if that was really true, because he cared so much about them. The answer was that, every time in the past, she had always tried to protect him, and always because of him she had lost her life. As if that wasn't enough, he said that no matter how much time passed, he would get her out of there safely, and that this was his only motivation and goal in life. She was very embarrassed by what the boy suddenly said, and then he revealed that he had obtained information about the other dark worlds from the awakened ones who had entered that world thus indicating a route for his companions to escape. He even promised the little magician that he would meet up with them again before they reached the end of the road, but first he had to do something, and set off without looking back to a different location. We now got a glimpse of a girl who was partying with the monsters, and she was a weaponsmith called Lin Yu. When her ammunition ran out, she thought she was going to go from bad to worse, and Lu Feng appeared out of nowhere, saving her life, pulling her to a safer place and giving her directions to where she would be able to get more ammunition. Lin Yu then asked why he was helping her, and it was because they were friends, although she couldn't remember. Returning to the companions, they were running tirelessly for their lives, and Anya wondered if this wasn't a trap by the newcomer. But Lu Chua, who appeared to be their leader, said that they should trust what the Proto said, which really wasn't a bad idea. This was because the protagonist was right in front of them, and after passing on new instructions to his friends, he revealed that he had a plan and that was why he had sent them there. Lin then activated the detonator he had with him, and almost ended up hitting his friends in that explosion too, however, he was able to finish off all the creatures at least. He even said that they didn't need to worry in the end, as he had calculated everything. When they reached a safe place, Lu Chua still couldn't believe that he had been trapped there for 3,000 years. Tao Tao then asked him what he had been doing apart from fighting for 3,000 years, and the protagonist said that he had learned how to fly a jet, programming and coding, and all kinds of knowledge about medicine and surgery, as well as specializing in simulation and strategy games. The guy is literally a knowledge machine, and after that he says goodbye to his friends, because he had to go somewhere else that had someone important to him as well. In a kind of amusement park, a boss was terrorizing some people who tried to fight him, and a young girl realized that the information she had been given about this boss was completely wrong. At one point, she noticed a beam of light coming down from the sky, and Lu Feng appeared, completely stealing the show. When the girl said he shouldn't be there because he was only level 2, the Proda said he was there to teach them how to defeat that boss. The problem is that it seems the protagonist got too carried away and pricked the boss's finger with it, revealing his weak point straight away saying that when that creature got hurt, it would always expose its core. With the core itself already exposed, he stuck his sword into the boss, finishing off the giant creature completely, after which a glowing sphere appeared in front of him, which even contained the mechanical egg of the monster he had just defeated. This egg had only one chance in 10,000 of being left by the creature, and with that boss defeated, people began to be teleported again, 
and he was already thinking that he would start all over again. But something wasn't right, because the moment the boy woke up, he realized that he was no longer in the world he always returned to, and the boy's sister then appeared in his room worried about him. She even said she was about to call the police, but Lu Feng couldn't help himself and gave his sister a big hug, even though for her it had only been a day, but as that wasn't enough, she wanted a more concrete explanation of where he was. We see a faint memory of him where an accident had happened that had taken his parents from that world and taken the movement out of his sister's legs, but even though the doctors said she would no longer walk, he promised that he would make sure her legs recovered. Returning to the present, he saw a program on TV that talked about the awakened, and it said that these people had extraordinary powers and different professions. According to legend, when the world of divine level shadows was successfully completed, all the dark worlds would be destroyed, and a guy called Austin said that one day he would awaken everyone from that nightmare of dark worlds. However, from the protagonist's reaction, it was the complete opposite, and the guy's real identity was that of a demon, and the boy had already been betrayed by him in the past. His real goal, in fact, was to control the whole world and thus become a god, and Lu Feng decided to create his own guild so that he could keep his friends safe, and when his sister called him in so that she could eat, we saw the egg he had managed to crack finally starting to crack. At the service center for Awakened Ones, Lu Feng was at the reception desk so that he could create the guild, and was being criticized by some people around him for only being level 9, and already trying for a guild himself. But when he showed the S-rank artifact he had gotten from the boss in the shadow world where he was, he ended up leaving everyone stunned. When he handed the artifact over to the girl in the shed, she said that he still needed at least three members in the next 36 hours to be able to create the guild, otherwise the artifact he had given as collateral would be lost. At the Kendo Center in London, we see Lu Chua refusing the protagonist's request for her to join his guild, and from here on I'll call her Louise. Anya was apparently the head of some company, and also turned down Lu Feng's offer, along with the warrior Rai Chan who had thought it was an attempt to prank someone. This led the protagonist to try to go after three others who hadn't shown up before, and in a street fight, a girl called Zaya possessed psychic abilities, and when one of her rivals unleashed a blast of fire at her, she managed to beat back all the projectiles with her power. As if that wasn't enough, she even ping-ponged the guy into the wall, until suddenly the protagonist appeared behind her, and inviting her to join his guild. She initially refused his offer, and the bullies who were with her said that for her to join his guild, he would have to show his strength first. This certainly wasn't a good idea for them, since with just one basic blow he had thrown the youngsters away, and Zaya had also tried to use his skills to test him. However, according to the protagonist, she was still too slow to really land a blow on him, and he quickly managed to leave her without any reaction. As that still wasn't enough, he had challenged her, where they would both use their psychic powers, since that was her specialty. In the challenge, they would have to knock over as many cans as possible, and in her turn she only managed to knock over five, and in his turn, he got excited again and knocked over all the cans that were lying around, making her agree to join his guild and asking him to teach her about these supreme abilities. In response, he said that he would make her a queen in this art, and finally said goodbye. While at home, the protagonist was quietly eating his meal until he received a notification on his cell phone, and it turned out that the girl he had saved earlier had agreed to join his guild without hesitation, but only temporarily, it seemed. Now he only had four hours to get his last recruit, and on a rainy day in the city, a young man was being bullied by some bullies who wanted his money. The boy only told himself that he couldn't fight back, since he was an awakened one and the guys were just ordinary people, but at one point he reached his limit and ended up summoning a three-tailed wolf against his will. The wolf even easily took out the guys who were making the boy suffer, and before the situation got any worse, Lu Feng appeared and attracted the creature's attention to himself, and tried to take it to another specific place, where he held the young man up high so that the wolf would return to the place it had left. The young man felt relieved that the wolf still remembered him, but the proto revealed that, in fact, the wolf itself was the boy, and the first time it appeared was when he went into the shadow world and was being attacked. If by any chance his ability wasn't controlled, the day would come when he could destroy the entire city with that power, but to prevent that from truly happening, Lu Feng offered his help and asked the young man to join his guild, and he immediately accepted. A few days later, we saw several people gathered in front of a D-rank shadow portal so that they could go through, 
and suddenly Lu Feng appeared saying that he and his companion would like to take part in this journey. But the leader apparently said that the boy wouldn't be able to enter because he was only level 9. And when Zaya said that he wouldn't enter if his boss didn't enter too, the leader ended up accepting the proto's participation. After that, we see the young man from before studying and that's why he couldn't take part in this journey. And when Zaya asked why he wanted all seven companions to join his guild, he said that the next force teleportation would be one of potential calamity. In other words, his friends would be safer if they were in the same guild, as they would be taken to the same place as him, so he could protect them, and finally they set off for the new Dirank Shadow World. When they got there, they saw the world in a state of enormous cold, and when a member of the group spotted a shiny butterfly, thinking it was harmless, she ended up regretting it bitterly, as her hand was frozen in the process. We saw that several others began to freeze after that too, and while Zaya thought they must be near some treasure, it was quite the opposite. The proto wanted her to use those butterflies so that she could improve her skills, but when she told him that this would be impossible, he decided to show her a small portion of his power, then wiped out several butterflies in one go. With that, he began to give her some tips on what she could do to improve her magic, and for her first training session, she needed to finish off 2,000 butterflies, and finally went off to rest while her companion trained. At that moment, Zaya wondered if it was really possible for her to finish off all those butterflies on her own. If you like this work and want to keep following its development, don't forget to leave your like so that you can support my work. It's always an honor and a privilege for me to have you with me so far. I wish you and your family all the best, a big hug and see you next time.